Hello friends, Chris here with ISK Recording. I recently had a guy ask me, hey Chris, can I hook my studio monitors up to the 8th inch output of my computer? And I told him, well, yeah you can, but you need a special connector to do that, it's not straightforward, and it might not sound as good. And he didn't really understand why. So in this lesson, I'm going to talk about cables. Balanced, unbalanced, stereo, mono, because you need to understand this stuff if you're going to have a successful recording studio. And also, by understanding this stuff, you can save tons of money by making your own custom cables whenever you need a specialized connector for something. So the first thing I'll mention about cables is, just like any electrical signal, audio requires two wires to flow through. You have a positive and a negative. It can also be called a signal and a ground. And when you have multiple channels of audio, they can all share the same ground and just have one signal wire. So with three wires inside a cable, you can have two channels of audio plus one ground. Or if you had five wires together, you could have four channels of audio and one ground. So I'm gonna start with one of the most basic connector types, and that's this guy right here. This is an RCA connector, sometimes also called a banana plug, and this just has two wires inside. You have your ground and you have your signal, and it just carries one channel of audio. Next, I'm gonna talk about quarter inch plugs. That's these guys right here. So here's a few different ones that I have. This here, this is a quarter inch unbalanced, and it's unbalanced because it only has two wires inside. So this quarter inch plug, this is the tip and this is the sleeve. The sleeve is the ground and the tip carries the signal. So T for tip, S for sleeve. So this is a quarter inch TS cable. This one here has a tip, a ring, and a sleeve. So this is called a quarter inch TRS cable. TRS stands for tip, ring, sleeve, and it has three wires on the inside. This here is a guitar cable. It just has a tip and a sleeve and only two wires on the inside. And of course, we have our eighth inch plug, and this is your typical headphone jack, and an eighth inch plug will have a tip, a ring, and a sleeve because there's three wires on the inside. And last but not least, we'll talk about the XLR cable. An XLR cable has three wires on the inside, and these are just labeled one, two, and three. Number one is the ground, and numbers two and three both carry the signal. Now, what happens when you plug something in, you have this big long wire going across from point A to point B. And what a big long wire is, basically, is it's an antenna, and it will pick up radio signals, whether it's from the radio station or just radio signals coming off of a piece of electrical equipment, such as a fluorescent light or a microwave or something, and that just causes interference. Now, generally, the amount of interference that a wire picks up is quite minimal, but because the audio flowing through these cables is also at a very low level, the interference can be substantial when compared to the volume of audio. So they've engineered methods built right into the audio cable themselves to try and reduce the amount of interference that the cable picks up. The first of those methods is the shielding. This shows the insides of a typical XLR cable. You have your two signal wires, the string here is just there for strength, and then the ground is wrapped around the signal wires. And what happens is the interference gets picked up by this outer wire and it's just routed into the ground, and that protects the two signal wires from picking up the interference. But not all shielded cables are created equally. See, some have better shielding than others. An example of a higher quality shield would be a thick braided shield that goes the entire length of the cable. Whereas this one here just has copper wire wrapped around it, and it's a little bit more prone to having gaps, which the interference can get through. Also, longer cables are, well, a longer antenna, so they're more prone to picking up interference as well. Now, with guitar cables especially, because it's an unbalanced high impedance signal, it's even more prone to picking up interference, and having better cables with better shielding will have a more noticeable effect on the sound quality. Now let's talk about mono and stereo a little bit. So mono is just one signal, and you can use this quarter inch plug to carry that, because it has a tip and a ring, two wires to carry one signal. Now a stereo cable, has a tip, ring, sleeve, three wires to carry two signals, and that's typically used for a stereo left and right. Whether it's speakers or headphones, that's the most common application of a stereo signal. So mono is just one signal, and stereo is two signals. It's that simple. 
Now let's talk about balanced signals. By balancing a signal, this is another one of the ways that's engineered to reduce interference. A balanced signal uses the same cables as a stereo signal. A balanced signal needs three wires, a ground and two signal wires. Now, although these two signals use the same type of cable, they're two very different types of signals, and it's important not to get confused between the two. What a balanced signal is, is it's a mono signal, so a single channel of audio that uses a ground and two wires to carry the signal. Now, the reason it uses two wires to carry the signal is because they've devised a way to use a second signal wire to get rid of the interference. I'll explain how this is done. It's actually quite neat. So here's an XLR cable. It has three wires inside, a ground and two signal wires. Now, when you plug this into a microphone and then into a preamp, what happens is the microphone creates the original signal and it creates it as a normal electrical signal. So it just needs two wires to travel through, a ground and a signal wire. But what they do to reduce interference is they make a copy of that signal wire, reverse the polarity, and send that down the XLR cable. So going down the XLR cable is your ground, your original signal wire, as well as a copy of the signal wire with reverse polarity. So the signal is being sent down the cable through two signal wires directly out of phase from each other. And when it gets into the preamp that it's plugged into, the signal wire that was flipped in polarity is flipped again so that it's back in phase with the original and then they're blended together. Now the reason this is effective at eliminating interference is because any interference that's picked up within the cable will get picked up evenly by both of those signal wires and then when one of them has its polarity flipped the original signal is now in phase with itself but any interference that was picked up is perfectly out of phase and gets cancelled out. So if you were to plug a pair of headphones which require a stereo signal into a balanced signal, what would happen is because a stereo signal is two mono signals, those two mono signals would be identical to each other but out of phase. So if you plugged headphones into that, then you would get the same signal in each ear, but they would be out of phase. And it would work, but it would actually sound really weird. So if we take a look at this mixer here, it has two balanced quarter inch outputs. Now if I were to plug a pair of headphones into one of those outputs, See, it would work, we would hear sound from both speakers, but it wouldn't sound right. It would just sound really weird. So you don't want to do that. Here I have a little adapter that I made that takes two balanced outputs and converges it into one stereo output. I did this because I have a Behringer DA converter with XLR outputs, and I wanted to use two channels of those XLR outputs to plug a pair of headphones in. So the way this is wired is there's three wires here on the stereo output. So there's a ground and two signal wires. The ground goes to both of these XLR connectors, and then one signal wire goes to each of these. So that means on each of these, there's one signal wire that's not being used, and it's just cut and terminated, not hooked up to anything. Here's a little diagram of how this is wired up. So I hope you found this video helpful, and if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments section down below. I'll do my best to answer them. If you liked this video, please do me a huge favor, high five that like button down there, and go have an awesome day.